Well, can he? He can. Yes, He's he gonna can. show you the day. This is the big finish at Lincoln Lodge. We're about to get it on the show. So come on, everybody, and get the show on the road. Let's get it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous Becca. We haven't recorded in 10 years. Ten, uh, 10 million years. It is the say. beginning of September. We last recorded at the end of February. Uh, yeah. And um, I don't even remember what our intro used to be. I think that we just said something like, hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Becca. And this is the big, big finish. finish. Okay. It was something like that. And then we it. made our we made our intro song a million years ago as well that I think we'll play right here. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think that we're we, we had to go have a hot girl summer. We did have a hot girl summer. Did you have a hot girl summer this summer? I think I had like a hot woman summer almost. Whoa. I feel really fucking old now after um, this summer, I would say. Yeah, wiser like like old in a good way or old in a bad way? I'd say like old in a in a wiser way, but also in a melancholy way. Melancholia. Yeah. Oh no. It's been a little melancholy. Like I celebrated my th- my 30th birthday and I know like we went out hard on the first night uh-huh. and then the second night we went out like medium <laughs> and then on the third night of the birthday weekend we got chicken wings and watched Shrek Oh, and that yeah. felt very like put me in a canoe and push me out like the Amy <laughs> Schumer sketch yeah, I'm yeah, done yeah. yeah 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 no I'm done being fun Is I don't think I'm done shelf life I don't think I'm I don't think I'm done being fun I just think I my body hurts more. I can't do as much. Yeah. Which is why I like I, I need to live vicariously through you and That's, you had a hot girl summer. I did have a hot girl which summer. I, love. I I I well one I was famously a, a dental receptionist last time it's we recorded. Hot. Um hot. and now I'm like I got like I they keep wanting to say like an adult job to describe what it is, but like I feel like that's condescending because here's the other thing. It's like the dental reception it was like minimum wage. It was um but it was so much harder than what I'm currently doing. Like as this more mm-hmm. corporate, like officey, like sales setting. Like, <laughs> well, that's the thing is, like, I like I also got my first adult job. Yeah, which I I'm a bit of a late bloomer compared to you. I got my <laughs> first adult job in March. Yeah, and it is, it is wild how less complicated corporate jobs are than minimum yeah. wage jobs. You think that's going to be so hard, but mm-hmm. it's like they really do like they pay you more and they like value your mental health more. Yeah. Which is like something that I as somebody who always just did gig work and minimum wage work, I Absolutely. was like, "Oh my god, I can get paid this much to do what feels so little when yeah. you're used to being like bottom of the totem pole 100. baby bitch." Oh my god, the oh, the dental receptionist that was such a such a brutal job. I I got, 2 <laughs> days before I got the job. Uh, I got my new no the day before I got my new job the day before I got the offer I remember I read in the printer that they were deciding between firing me and another girl up front I was like you girls don't even know I'm about to leave and then I like <laughs> I, but then I wanted to like do that thing where like you storm out and like you don't give them your two weeks and like but then I needed the money so like, I know I needed the money for the transition uh, the tra- well that's the thing is like I told before we started recording I told you like I'm, f- I'm not going back to my after school teaching job yeah i am gonna still be like working with kids and and teaching in in a different vicinity but like the one that i've been with for six years we had new management come in and my last straw was like my new manager i walked into our supply closet and she was throwing away student artwork (gasps) like a fucking disney villain no and so i remember i went to like my manager who's like so this is a well, top okay, manager wait, what do you mean by like student artwork like the stuff they just made or like stuff that was like their final projects so me and my coworker were digging through the trash trying to retrieve their artwork and i remember do, they, do you give it back to the kids typically typically we do but we couldn't this year because oh. so much of the artwork got thrown out wow. and her argument when we said you can't just throw away stuff without talking to the teaching artist and she said it's fine we'll get more And I went to my boss and I was like, I feel like that's how she also feels about the teaching artists. And that's why I'm strongly considering not coming back next year. And because I made noise, big Finnish listeners, they didn't give me a contract. So I didn't get to have my dramatic storm out moment either. Yeah, God, no, I, 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 I miss some... 
the great God, not re- what it was. What was the great resignation? I I, mm. I didn't get my my great resignation moment. Everyone Although, gets that, and we did it. I know it. It's I I just there are so many jobs that I've wanted. Almost every job I've ever done, I want to be like f you, I'm out. And um, <laughs> but I've I've never done it before. I'm such a goody two shoes. I always get my two weeks, and I know. or or the restaurant closes down. The first I know that one. I'm like, oh, that's so sad. Uh, I think like even the one that I wanted to do, the like I call it the Walter Hobbs elf. Screw you, I'm out. Like I wanted yeah. to do that. I worked at this coffee shop, but really it was like I was going to get fired because I was late every day to open the coffee shop, <laughs> <laughs> and like some librarian finally snitched on me. So I was like, I went to my boss like the meeting where I could tell she was gonna fire me, and I was like. Look, you know, I feel like this is like trying to put a square peg in a long hole. I I just think it's best that I resign. Yeah. And she was like, I think that that's a great idea. So then she didn't have to fire me because I resigned. But I've always been like in jobs for a long time. That was the only one like where I realized like, oh, I can't work service. I can't do it. The, well, the, it's not even like the service. I, I mean, like some, sometimes it's like I can't get up that early and open this restaurant. <laughs> like that might be a big part of it. Like yeah. getting, you know, I, the, what's hard now is like like my commute is long, and that's oh. um. Oh God, I feel like I feel like I sound like like a forty year old. I'm oh. like I'm like I'm like oh my commute. Oh Ew, my commute. I need coffee. <laughs> 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 I need my coffee. <laughs> um, are you a big coffee drinker? I am a big coffee drinker. I'm I'm probably gonna go get a coffee right after this podcast. But um, I I think that I the one thing that I feel like things fell into place for me is like you said about being a morning person. I am I am not one, and my job mm-hmm. now is fully remote. Mm-hmm. So. I can work. I I just have to clock my hours in eventually by the yeah. end of the week. Yeah. So I end up doing a lot of my hours like between eight p.m. and midnight, and then I just sleep in, which is more that which is, is more what my body wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My body's happier. Uh, I don't even know what my body wants anymore. My body is confusing me. Confusing. Me. confusing. I also got my tonsils removed since our last. We. I was scared to record for forever because I was afraid I was going to lose my ability to sing, which it turns out actually doesn't do that. It doesn't do that, but you. I understand the fear because I think I was a late tonsillectomy as well. I got mine when I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. And my mom still to this day says that I haven't been able to sing the same since. Why do moms say stuff like that? It's just me. And it's like, it's girl, just, shut up. Yeah, like, 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 and also, lie. It's not that if, if, if I'm not singing the same, I don't think it's the tonsillectomy. It's probably the, the random cigarettes <laughs> and liquor. That's yeah, probably yeah, what's fucked up yeah, my singing that, voice. That I am, I, you know, it's crazy because I cannot talk to a cute boy for the life of me, but I'm constantly flirting with a nicotine addiction. <laughs> I, oh <my> I, <laughs> I, I like, uh, there is like, I've started like, Vaping, like it started with vaping when I was like really drunk, and then it became like, or like a cigarette, and then it now it's become like I have one drink, and I'm like, <laughs> I'll do a vape, and now I'm like, but the limit I have to, I can never buy one. If I ever yeah. buy one, it'll be over. Right? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't buy them, but I, I do like, I, I'm very much like, can I just spell my cigarette? Like anybody who's listening to this, who's known me since 2018, is probably like. Jamie Schreiner owes me five hundred dollars in <laughs> yeah. loose cigarettes, honey, honey. And you know what? I'm not sorry. I'm just sorry that I asked for them. I need to. S- uh, me too. Because it's like I I quit smoking and I was so proud of myself. And then as soon as everybody's like, check out this thing called a jewel, I was like, <sighs> what a curse against humanity. Yeah, a jewel. And then the posh. It's like they just keep renaming it and making it a different thing. And now I sound like a forty year old. But they just keep renaming <laughs> no, it I and mean, we're like, yeah, let's fucking do. This isn't a jewel, so it's got to be better. It's the same shit. It's and the a same different show. thing. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I love it so yeah, much. Yeah, it's fun there. I love what I love. It's funny. We were like, we, so Beckett and I, we Except did Except I do. actually don't. If I, I'm if I'm being honest with myself, like, I actually don't. Like, it's not that cool. It's not that cool. Like, I it just, is, is it, like, and I do it and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'll wake up the next day and like my throat will hurt really bad. Yeah, and like, yeah. and I'm like, I actually didn't like this that much. Anyway, but sorry, what were you The saying? thing is like, I think I just, I love the nostalgia of it, but I don't love how it makes me feel. Nicotine nostalgia. I do. Cause I started smoking when I was like 14. Cause oh. Indiana, <laughs> baby. Cause of Indiana. They try to get you young. But I, uh, the, what I was going to talk about was just that like when we were in Wisconsin with John and Jackie, 
I remember I was like telling that story. I was like, oh, Jenna, like that night I like hit your vape and it, it just put me over the edge. And Jenna's like, no, you were like already. <laughs> I feel like that's like when I'm at that point where I'm like, oh yeah, like what's a little, like I, I'm too far gone. Like I should have yeah. already gone home. Yeah. Speaking of, should, should we talk about Sheboygan? We recently I, did a comedy show in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. We're really blowing up. Okay. I, <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, honey, honey. Sheboy, Sheboygan. Uh, I, it was like, um, what, okay, so I walk into Sheboygan, Wisconsin, in this bar, and it's cute, and they were super sweet. And um, but I am always nervous when I'm like on the road or shit. I'm like, they're not gonna like me or what I have to bring to this town. And um, luckily, they were they they were very open. They were very open. They were they were very yeah. lovely, and they were a great audience. I feel like I. F- I <laughs> you had a really hard time. One, I, yeah. very generously, I think you kind of gave us all like 15 minutes when, like maybe we all should, like 15 to 20 minutes, when yeah. we all maybe should have been doing a little shorter time. Yeah, so I, like, I went on to headline 45 minutes into, yeah. like probably more than 45 minutes. I think I gave everybody 15 to 20 and everybody ended up doing between 18 and 20 minutes. So it was yeah. already like everyone, like the show had been going about an hour. I hit the stage. 15 minutes into my set, this this very drunk girl Stop, who was like she was kind of guiding the she masses was, uh, what, what we we've d- designated an audience leader which is like she was the leader she was one of those people who it's like she isn't heckling but she's really ready to talk like when you ask the audience for yes. something and but she's like encouraging and laughing it's like a very good way. loud yeah was making so she she gets up like like um she's been possessed by a ghost and walks to the back of the room and everyone sees her leave and kind uh-huh. of you can feel the tensions palpable yeah. and i'm yeah. trying to just you know theater major me i'm like just keep going you know keep doing your set so i'm doing my set and it's like to like tepid response now because the 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 top girl yeah top laugher has left the room she then comes back in the room gets into her seat and i catch out of my peripheral vision as i'm i'm in probably the like what have what what would have been the last 15 to 20 minutes of my set Uh uh-huh i i look and see her throw up into her glass yeah and that's when i just go abort abort like do do your last joke for your merch (laughs) yeah and get the fuck out of there and that's exactly that's what happened because everybody you could tell people recoiled because like yeah you're in a in a small back bar room and a woman vomits into her glass you want to get the fuck well out of i saw the, the whole room. the whole situation going on and i at first i thought she spit her drink back up into her cup because it was like just but then slowly it became abundantly clear that i was like oh no homegirl's got a homegirl has yeah. um had had to get that out which honestly i've kind of been there yeah kind and, of been there. and i uh i've i have been there as well I don't think I've ever puked into a cup. I don't think I've done that either. But but I have puked in a public place. I here's my one thing I will say about me is I always make it to a toilet or a trash I can. can. That's one. That's kind of one of I my can. gifts. Yeah. I I kind of that's kind of probably my premier talent. Like the whole thing I kind of sell my act on is is I'm gonna have to throw up, but I'm gonna make it no matter yeah. where I am. You know uh, what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I I guess I'm I'm lucky in that way. There have been a few close calls, but and too like there have been like a few like maybe alleys or something. But uh, mm-hmm. the alley alleys are our allies. Yes. In these moments, they, but they do hold your hair, get you somewhere safe. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I basically just performed for silent, sad people who wanted to not be around vomit anymore, mm. and I was like, yeah, you you feeling a little in the trenches. You're feeling a little bit like, wow, I drove up to Sheboygan, Wisconsin to perform comedy for Puke Girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we we went over to this bar and I'm with, you know, our like Beckett, beautiful man, Jackie, Jenna, beautiful gals. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, this 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 man in the back of the bar was just obsessed with me. Jamie. Couldn't let Jamie, it go. Another gorgeous girl. I am a gorgeous gal too, but I was just like, <laughs> I feel like the universe was like, you know what? We really fucked her. <laughs> Let's give her a win. Let's give I remember her one win. That guy, I felt like initially didn't like me, but kind of came around. He hated Jenna. He hated Jenna. Oh, he was what? so mean to Jenna. That guy loved you. Was really like everyone loved Jackie. Jackie worked the room like nobody was. Jackie, Jackie was Cooper, like our first guest, befriending like boomer people at that bar. She befriended to... every single person we met. We literally, yeah. So Jackie, <laughs> I was like, what an icon. Icon Jackie. Yeah. The only true icon, Jackathy. We had to 
like physically remove her. We yeah. had to be like, girl, we gotta go. Cause yeah. it was like, I think that it was like, what, it was like midnight when we left and we had to drive like two or three hours back. Yeah. Because it's like. What a saint you were too for, for me, 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 Jen and Jackie were like, like let's like go to a bar. Yeah, like, and you're like. I and you're like, like okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I felt like that meme you said. I'm like, let's go be sluts on a road trip. Okay. <laughs> like, twist my arm. Why don't you? Yeah. Because the thing is, it's like, my thing is, I was I was down to go out and have a fun time because it's like, I know when I've truly bombed. Mm. Like when I did, I did Mustangs in South Beloit. Mm-hmm. And that room, I truly bombed because I walked on stage and they were like, she looks like a gay communist and we hate her <laughs> like i couldn't yeah like whereas this situation they were on board they until were s- they had a distraction yeah and then i kind of just had to gracefully wrap it up yeah so i like i wasn't gonna beat myself up over that no it's like it's like you it said, wasn't a bomb it wasn't a bomb it was just um they were just, tired and there was, was a, a bad set yeah <laughs> there's a bomb there's a bad set it was a bad set so i was like let's go out but um yeah sheboygan that's funny. I didn't realize that he was being mean to Jenna because I think that I was just you were like just so enjoying. you're like oh god he's obsessed with me. I was just like yeah. I'm I remember kind of one time upset. I like I like felt weird. It was like five dollars or something, and for some reason I I thought I think it was cash only or something. And I asked if somebody had like a five dollar bill, and then he goes he goes they really like you, huh? <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm like I'm like I'm like yeah they do like me <laughs> I'm like I'm like yeah they do actually as a matter of fact and then I like go and I'm like do they like me no um, <laughs> we love you we don't yeah. just like you we love you God bless God bless God bless I, the USA. I, I um I've I've been dating a guy <gasps> this is I'm you waited to tell me this until the have, have I not told you anything about this up until now wait no I did know because. We talked in the car about the Lady Gaga concert. Oh wow! And then, okay. and then, yes. Okay, so now I remember. Okay. So, well, for, so I I have never invited a guy over to see a show of mine before in my life because I think that that's kind of psycho, mm-hmm. and um, I think most women comedians will be like, like it's psycho to invite a guy to your show, like especially. But then most mm-hmm. male straight comedians who were talking to me, they were like, they're like, no, invite like this guy to your show, like he'll love it. You'll look so hot and cool. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I we just trying this guy on Tinder. I very rarely actually go on Tinder dates. And I'm like, you know what? I have this show on Sunday. Like, let me invite him. Yeah. And it was a good lineup. I was like, I was like, there's a chance I might not kill, but I'm like, I probably will. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're like, I and, probably got it. And um, I, I didn't kill um in fact he was the only audience member um Aww. he was the only audience member the show did get canceled i think i was the only comedian who showed up on time as well which is which is <laughs> and, Virgo. and um I, he luckily though i turned it around and we ended up making out in the clown bathroom here Ooh, which it's like spicy which it's a little cuckoo to make out in a clown bath but there's not a better bathroom choice here no it's, it's also iconic one. at least the clown bathroom there's like decor the mm. other one feels like very sterile it feels very like you're at the scary. dentist's office yeah and yeah. you left the dentist's office behind so mm. we can't be mm. doing we can't How, be making so out true so true i did leave the dentist's office yeah behind. so you gotta you gotta obvious next step make out in the clown bathroom i feel like also so many i mean so many people are doing much worse things probably in those bathrooms yeah that a, that a, a innocent first date make out 100 is iconic 100 percent. i um okay so i have to ask you this yeah so when did you did, did you always do polygamy or were you like is that like a kind of a newer thing for you that like you're discovering yes so i would say I wouldn't necessarily say I do polygamy. I'm more into polyamory, so like I like okay, to date. Yeah, and I wasn't sure. And that's I... fine. Yeah, yeah. I like to I like to like date and develop intimate romantic relationships with other people. I feel like I did try the like the more swingers polygamy side of things mm-hmm. for a for a hot second, and I just it's not really what I'm looking for. Right. I'm more so looking for like really close mm-hmm. intimate relationships with people. Um, but I feel like that's something that I definitely put on pause just because I did have such a bad sort of like breakup yeah. in the spring that I feel like yeah. I've very much been like, you know, like, and I had a bad breakup in the fall before that where I like, I text message broke up with this girl and I still feel so bad about it. I did not handle it well at all. I just don't like confrontation. Mm. 
and I knew that she was gonna be mad, but then she showed up at my show the day that I texted her to say that I was like busy and, and it, I was gonna not be able to like be there for her in the way she needed. Yeah. And she stood in the back and glared at me while I was doing my set. And then when I got off stage, she was gone. So I was like, and I just haven't seen her set, but it's like, I, I was like, now I feel like I, maybe I should edit this part out, but I, I just, uh, yeah, that was one where I was like, I just felt really, really bad. And it's like I'd been talking to some male comedians that mm-hmm. were there with me about Which, how I felt bad about it. Yeah, and they're and like, then, who cares? Uh, yeah, and then when, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then when she walked in, they were like, oh, oh shit, is that her? Oh, and I was like, don't make it weird. Yeah, like, I already worst. feel really bad. And now you're all like, oh my God. Like, so yeah, I felt like a, a fuck boy. And I didn't like feeling like a fuck boy, so I just was like, I, I'm I'm very much in the mindset of like, I I am so polyamorous. I'm not on any of the apps, and I'm kind of just in a place where it's like, if I met somebody and we like vibed, I would be into it. Mm-hmm. But I just haven't really met anybody that I've been like, yeah, this seems worth the trouble. <laughs> well, so what I was gonna ask you is like, I have all so what I'm I have always in my life. I've never had like a committed relationship or like Mm -hmm. a monogamous relationship or really any kind of boyfriend or anything like that. And this is, and I don't know where this is going and it's still kind of early and we haven't had a discussion of what we are, but um, I'm like, it feels like it's kind of headed towards a more relationship way. And Mm -hmm. I've always thought that I wanted that. And I still think I do. I definitely at least want to try it. But now I'm for the first time in my life, I'm having like anxiety about like, being in a relationship and mm-hmm. it's not it's not about him or like not liking him or not wanting to be in a relationship with him but it's just like i'm like oh my and, and it's not even that i have like sex or date a ton of people but i just am now having like anxiety about the idea of it about which being, i never did before yeah and it's like it's one of those things that's like i i feel bad because the like the only answer that i could give really is just like it's best to like talk about it with the person and like on a case-by-case basis figure out what works best for you because it's like i think part of why we're polyamorous is because we both go through periods where we're sometimes like oh dating sounds fun and like Mm -hmm, meeting new people mm -hmm. and it's like it's funny because i feel like both my husband and i right now are very much in a period of like we're more focused on career things than like other relationships and then it's like we have each other to like lean on and we have the support and so it's like i definitely think that like people who choose to be monogamous at least like early in the relationship it's really good to like build those build that strong bond yeah yeah and it's like i mean yeah we go back and like we've gone back and forth we've gone through periods of being monogamous we've gone through periods of being open with our relationship i think it's really just like a case-by-case basis and what you and your partner or your you know person you're seeing are most comfortable with Mm -hmm. is really because like there's no one size fits all right there are people who are more like swingers or people like tom and i whereas like i do think tom is somebody who is more so pursuing like fun friends with benefits kind of things where it's like I like I would like want the romance yeah, that's what yeah, I love yeah. like I like I mean the like porn for me is like watching Bridgerton and Dirty Dancing like I'm not trying to like go to a <laughs> yes. sex dungeon you yeah. know I'm trying to have somebody really see me yeah and love that person yeah yeah totally totally and that doesn't even necessarily like that could be a, a relationship where there's no sex whatsoever right that could be like a, f- a friendship dynamic that's yeah that way. definitely um I I um yeah that is it, it, it is some just something that I have to like try and figure out but I'm like I'm like what is I could but the other thing about me too is I'm a deeply jealous person well yeah and that's that, and I would say like that's the biggest thing why I think it's almost something that you need to like really sit with and think about because it's like if you're like oh well I want to be able to do what I want but like you would be upset if they did the same I thing would, then yeah. it's like then yeah then you they, probably yeah. gotta yeah. just be monogamous right but then I'm like am I a deeply jealous person like I like I'm like I'm like I'm like I but it, I, I I don't know I feel like though like I'm a jealous person but I'm like I'm like I wonder if I felt secure enough in a relationship if I that would you feel be. the same way you know what I mean yeah. um and I feel like a lot of my jealousy comes from insecurity and it's like I mean I think most people's jealousy most you would people, say is yeah, like yeah, yeah. comes from insecurity um and I think, I mean, really, all I was gonna throw into the throw into the mix there is that I really do think it's like you have to have that security in the relationship because it's funny because it's the people who are the the hugest critics mm-hmm. of polyamory as a lifestyle choice are typically people who are like cheaters or having an affair, and that's very much a thing where it's like you are horny by 
like making something that's meant to be secure completely unstable. Mm-hmm. Like that's what mm-hmm. turns them mm-hmm. on is the chaos of that. Wow. Yeah. And I've been that person and it's like ultimately that comes from a place of like you are broken inside, you are insecure inside and you don't have the the confidence in what you're bringing to the table to look the person you love in the eye and say actually I want this other thing. You have to do it behind their back and I'm just like just be honest with people. Yeah. Like, just be honest with people. And I feel like it's like, if you're not sure yet, then you don't need to voice that. But I think that right. once you have some clarity, then you absolutely can yeah. ask for what you want. And yeah. And also just like, I think it is like, it's it's like with anything, it's a journey. It's not like immediately you're going to be like, we're polyamorous and you're going to immediately like, if they go and date, on a date with somebody else, maybe that'll trigger you or maybe right, you know what right, i mean and right. so that's why i think it's like uh well and then i too i know that like different like polyamorous couples have different rules where some of them it's like they want you to tell every single thing and some of them it's like keep it completely private from me yeah, like yeah. i don't i don't want to like you can do whatever you want but like don't tell me but then some of them it's like it's like um i need you to tell me every time you go on a date because like which is so interesting and then i th- this was maybe a tweet or a meme that you shared or something or you commented on that was like talking about like making fun of like people when you're in a polyamorous relationship like making fun of like crushes that your partner has or something which is I yeah I think I've seen that meme and it's like it is funny the idea (laughs) of like one also I don't know like one thing I do appreciate about like my lifestyle is like if I go on a really bad date, mm-hmm. I can go home and be like, "Oh my god, you have no idea <laughs> what yeah. the fuck just you know." It's nice to have that person to talk to and kind of like laugh about it with. Um, what what are what's your relationship with that? Well, well you guys do talk about we it. we do theory, talk about it. Do, like, is this one of those things where it's like you feel like you have to talk about it or just you're gonna end up talking about it because it's my thing is like Tom really wants to know. I'm somebody who I'm like I'd like to know just enough i don't need yeah, like yeah. vivid detail Definitely. i'm like just i just want to know enough um but also i think the the other thing with it as well is just that um you know it's interesting because it's like i realized like because we were open and then we were closed and we were open again i realized that like something that really incited jealousy in me that i kind of had to work on is like when tom would date somebody who like shared interests that he and i don't share so oh, like if he like was dating somebody who was like into airplanes or like into things that I don't really get, I felt really insecure by that because I was like, oh, well, what if he likes this person more because mm-hmm. they get these things that I don't get? Whereas like if I date another artist, Tom doesn't give a shit. So right. it's like it's funny because it's like that's something that it's like I feel inferior or I felt inferior about that I had to like work through and let go of. Okay, this reminds me of a story actually. That yeah, I really, no, no, okay. No. So over the summer I hooked up with this guy I'm chewing ice and like that's psycho. It is ruining my jaw. <laughs> it is ruining my jaw. But um I went on uh like I went to hook up with this guy yeah. on Grinder and I went over to his apartment and um he was like telling me he was gonna move to Ohio, and I'm like, I'm like, why are this you? This guy. Okay. Oh, I've told you this already. But yeah, no, the uh, but, but surprise, the podcast. Though. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm like, why are you moving to Ohio? And he's like, well, my ex boyfriend like told me that I was only moving to Ohio because of him, and now I'm gonna go move to Ohio because I want to, and that's what I've wanted to do, and I want to move to Ohio. And I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, and and this guy was like. A really sweet uh, this is this is not meant to be this is not a negative assessment this is just an assessment yes. of his personality that he seemed to be very clearly autistic <laughs> like, uh-huh. and i'm yeah. not saying like 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 I, I i feel like i've dated a lot of autistic guys which I mean, is like yeah. kind of nice for me because they're like smart and like sweet but they're very different from me and bring like the opposite energy to me yeah, yeah. although sometimes i feel like my jokes, they don't always register because I feel like some of the social cues, like because you know, anyway, and they're they're so straightforward. They are so straightforward, and, like, and I'm like to the point of being like, zoo, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm being a little shifty girl, um, but, but I remember um, he, it, but he was, and he was like an engineer, and like that's like you know, yeah. um, and I remember we went to his backyard, and he like there was this like view of like. Um, like the round line like going off into the woods yeah, yeah, yeah. and like and it was beautiful and it kind of didn't look like chicago it was like the just train going into all this greenery and i'm like and i said to him like and i thought that he would get this joke and like 
tell laugh. me. Yeah, yeah. But, but I was like, I was like, so you li- really like trains, huh? <laughs> oh. And then, and then he was like, yeah, I love trains. I love, I love, I love everything about trains, but li- like not as much as other mechanical things. Like, like my friends, they really love trains. I'm like, oh yeah, you love trains. <laughs> no, but um, so I was thinking about that because of like airplanes and stuff and like um, yeah it's those things that you're just like but i want to get it but i feel like i i yeah yeah so, but then like afterwards um he told me that like he was like going to ohio to he was like maybe when i go back to ohio i'll like end up back together with this guy and i told him i said look at me you and that guy are never getting back together and if you're moving to ohio for that you you need to stop you can't move to ohio because that's that's a bad idea but I don't I think he's moving to Ohio anyway yeah. to try and catch this guy who is not right Aww. and it's not like it wasn't like a thing of like I was like he can't be talking about this. I'm gonna ruin their relationship I'm not gonna let him go to Ohio and find another like I I actually was living for the tea too that like he was giving me all this drama about his ex on this grinder hookup I'm like I'm like thank god nummy 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 like yeah, yeah, please yeah, tell yeah, me yeah, more yeah. but uh, and he was a very sweet guy but I but, um yeah he was um he <laughs> I was like, you can't move to Ohio for this guy because that's just, this guy is not this guy is is moving on and like, but I, don't I just wish I wish people would watch like Legally Blonde or Hot Chick or like any movie with yeah. like the with the premise of the person running after because I'm gonna get him to want me back like just yeah. just let it go. No, you're gonna be a lawyer in a pink suit. You're gonna be at a the lawyer in a day. pink suit. That's what's really gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna, gonna move to love, Ohio. You're gonna move to Ohio. You're gonna fall in love with your best friend who's in a man's body. Uh huh. And then they're gonna change back to themselves, and you're gonna have to. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just. I think that I d- I just wish that people in in those shoes because I've been in those shoes where you're like oh there's gotta be some way I can get him back like I'm constantly in those shoes yeah. <laughs> yeah, just um, try them put on. those shoes on Craigslist. I have, I have like one of those boxes full of those little slips that you can just try them on without r- put them well, b- over your foot. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like when yeah. You go to little, yeah. <laughs> like those shoes I'm trying on. <laughs> you, you, you put them on. I am a chaser. I am a chaser, baby. And, and I'm I, saying put those shoes back. Yeah. On yeah. the shelf. Yeah. You got to. I just, yeah, I feel like um, anything... I mean, maybe this is the the air sign moon in me. Anything that I have to put too much effort into, relationship wise, is not worth it. I feel like I'm like it should ebb and flow. I shouldn't have to prove myself, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean. There mm-hmm. there should be none of that. If that's there, it ain't it. Yeah. And and I think Ohio boy deserves better. He deserves more. And I hope yeah, that he, no, he figures he, that out. I think I think he'll figure it out. But he has to do it himself. That's like me. Like wh- you know when you see somebody like fiddling with something like a door or something, and they cannot get it open. And you're like looking at it, you're like I know that I can't get this door open either. But like I have to try. I have to go and like jiggle the door myself bad. to actually believe that it is like locked beyond repair. Because I'm not gonna just see you not being able to. I, I'll think that. But then every once in a while. You can open it. You can open it. You can open it. Every every now and then you can open it. It's like the other thing with this Chiboygan trip that was the most iconic moment that I forgot to mention. Becca, so I've been driving my grandma's car because I also had a very depressing June where uh, I got cyberbullied. Yeah, I got, yeah, like literally end of June. It was like they were almost like, screw you for being queer like the last (laughs) three days of June because it was like. I Didn't getting, Roe v. Wade happen in June? Too? Yeah. So it was like Roe v. Wade happened. Uh, I was getting cyber bullied by somebody online, like really viciously. They were making new accounts to like bully me. My car broke down in Mississippi in a mm. town where a woman mm. was murdered of like a thousand people. And I had to like wait for my friend to come pick me up. Um, I like, you know, found out I didn't get the festival that I wanted to get. We'll just say that. We'll just say it that way. All these things happened like one on top of each other. I remember I was just like laying there like trying to like get some ounce of serotonin <laughs> yeah with break my soul and i was like i don't know beyonce i think they're breaking my soul you yeah know, i think that they are but the point of the story is i've been driving my grandma's car and that's what we drove to sheboygan and i've had to listen to the radio because the cd player was broken and who fixed my cd player but beckett thank you thank you thank you and it's you. like one of those examples it's like i was trying i was trying i was trying i couldn't get to fix and then i get a friend in my car that that also happens though where it's like you will say like i cannot get this i've tried everything and then as soon as you bring somebody in they can fix it also sorry really quickly and i think we should go into the song after this but i did an escape room for 
the first time this Thursday and I was like, okay, I'm going to be the cheerleader. And then like, I was talking to like my work team who we did it together. And they're like, they're like, we're, we've all found out like what our subtypes would be. And we think you're the leaper. And uh, you read this description of the leaper. It's like, it's like sometimes more of a hindrance than a help. <laughs> it's like, it's like has wild out of the box ideas that often add to nothing. Like, they're probably thinking too much about this. Like they're, they're like, but every once in a while it works out. But I, so I, and I was like going in, I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm the dumb hot one. I'm going in, I'm, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to, but I came in there, I was like, I am solving these goddamn puzzles. I'm like, I am like, there is a reason I went to a gifted middle school. No. <laughs> Oh my god. No, I'm like I was like Sherlock Homo up in there. I'm like I'm like bitch. I, you could it was like a jail themed escape room. I'm like you could put me in actual jail, I'd get out. Like that's like how confident I am now in my escape room ability. I love <laughs> so, that. Um yeah. I feel like we're both people maybe I'm I'm not the leader, but I do think that we're both people who if we see somebody who can't open the door, we're like well, I probably could. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I could, I could probably do that real yeah. quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to. I love to try things. I love to I love try, to try things. them um, when there's no stakes. Because if somebody already can't open the door, there's no stakes to you not being able to open the door. They already yeah, fucked the, it up. The bar is low. The bar is low. low. Limbo, baby. Let's backbend. Um, <laughs> and let's backbend into into this song. Yeah, Should hit we it. Do it now? Let's hit it. Let's go. <clears throat> Just because you can't open the door doesn't mean that I can't, doesn't mean that I can't. Just because you can't open the door doesn't mean that I can't, doesn't mean that I can't. Just because you can't open a door Doesn't mean you have to lie on the floor Come on, get up and ask for some help Ooh, get up and ask for some help Just because you can't open the door Doesn't mean you can't find a window And crawl out the window And just because the window's on the 40th floor Doesn't mean there's not a fire escape you can use to leave Ooh, you can use to leave Ooh, there is always a place to get in a place you can get in if there is a door that means there's an entrance you can crawl through the vents like you're on Disney Channel or you can bust it down like strong lumberjack hand flannel. <laughs> <laughs> you can always get in. And just because you can't open the door doesn't mean I can't open that door. Open that door. Just because you can't. Just because you can't. Open that door, open, open that door to see what's in store. Oh, you know I adore when I'm turning that knob. Don't you stop. Oh, the door is my hole. Yes, this is also a sex thing. I cannot wait to open that door. I'll be asking for more when I open, open that door. <laughs> fun, fun one. That was a fun, fun one. one. That was good. I love how too that like we talked about something different basically the whole time, but then we're like, that's yeah, about the door. <laughs> at the end of the day, I think the door is a metaphor. It's a meta door. It is a meta door. <laughs> um, yeah, and and now with that, I mean, it, it took us truly a year. I think we're ready to close our door on our first season of yes. The Big Finish. I mean, I guess we already had our big number, but is there anything you took away from this podcast before we go? I took away that, you know, in the end, the only true icon is Jackathy. Um, um, you gotta, you gotta, first you gotta open the door. Yeah. First you gotta open the door. I think those are honestly my favorite songs that we've done. We did some great ones we though. Shout out to ones. Mo. Shout out uh, yeah, to Joe. Yeah. Oh God, we tried to rap. Oh God. Yeah, that one I'm gonna kill be us. really embarrassed. Go back in time and kill us. <laughs> Just literally stab me in the throat. I can only rap when I have 
a month to have thought about it. Is yeah. what I learned from that experience. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh my. I have the perfect thing to end the podcast on. <gasps> okay. Yes, I wrote yeah. the perfect rap lyric. I wrote, the, I feel like I should sell this like hard to be making this on. And by the way, mm-hmm. I will sue your ass. I will find a way to sue your ass if you steal this from me. This is my rap lyric. Okay. Um, Copyrighted. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. I, I, it could be like a song about like how the pussy is so sick or something. I don't okay. know. <clears throat> he be sneezing when he pleasing because this pussy gazoon tight. <gasps> isn't that isn't that okay okay uh, and with that a chew a chew and a do uh, and thank you so much to the Lincoln Lodge for letting us record here please follow their podcast network and you can follow me on Instagram at Jamie Trainer Biddle I'm also on TikTok under that Bucket where can the fans find you at Bucket with two T's Kenny K-E-N-N-Y hopefully it'll be in the description of this podcast follow, follow those links please please help us that's the best thing you can do is like support this podcast follow us and God bless America God bless America we love you bye bye this is the big finish at Lincoln Lodge. We're about to get it on the show. So come on, everybody, and get the show on the road. Let's get it on the road.